In this video on financial maths, we'll be looking at the basics of compound interest and a bit of vocabulary. First thing to do is have your log tables to hand. Have them open to page 30 and page 31. Here we have page 30. And just to note a few pieces of information that we need to be aware of. At the very top here, it says that in all of the following, T is in years and I is the annual rate of interest, depreciation or growth expressed as a decimal or a fraction, they say here, but we're going to be going with decimals. So, for example, I equals 0 0.08 represents a rate of 8%. So whenever we're given a percentage, we're going to change it to a decimal straight away. We've got some formulae here then for compound interest. We've got the first one here that calculates final value. The next one here that calculates present value. A formula for depreciation on the reducing balance method. And a formula here for depreciation on the straight line method. If we turn over the page to page 31, at the top of the page here, we have the amortization formula. We'll be seeing this a little bit later in the chapter. There are some more formulae on page 32 that we don't tend to encounter that much really when we're dealing with the financial maths chapter. So I'm not going to really be referring to these very much, but I just wanted to mention them because it's interesting to note that in the continuous compounding section, we see a formula that's very similar to one that we've seen previously in the algebra three chapter when we were dealing with logs and indices. Okay, so let's begin with some vocabulary. First, we have present value. Present value is often represented by the letter P. It represents the value before any interest is applied. Sometimes we refer to it as principal. We more commonly see it called present value in this chapter though. Next, we have future value. This is represented by F. Future value is the value of an investment or loan after interest has been applied. Interest is the amount as a percentage that is earned by the investment or charged on the loan. When we're dealing with annual interest, we call this I. And if we're de dealing with interest over a different period, such as a month, we tend to call it R. We'll always have the interest as a decimal in our calculations. Time is represented by the letter T, and it refers to the number of times that interest is applied to an amount. Often T represents years, but sometimes it may represent months. We may also encounter the term APR, which stands for annual percentage rate. You'll see APR mentioned in the context of loans or borrowings. And we'll also encounter the AER. This stands for the annual equivalent rate, and it refers to investments. Occasionally, we'll encounter the phrase discount rate. This is really just another term for the interest rate. And it's used when we're going to calculate P. Note that APR and AER are also effectively I. So our example is find the value to two decimal places of €2,000 invested for eight years at an AER of 4%. Remember that AER stands for annual equivalent rate and just refers to the interest. So the first thing I'll do is go to my log tables and pick out the correct formula. And in this case, it's the first formula that we see. F equals P bracket 1 plus I to the power of T. Before I begin to calculate, I'm going to make a note of the pieces of information that I know. P, the principal, is 2000 If I think of myself sitting at the beginning of this eight-year period, then I can also think of this as being the present value as what it's worth now. I, the interest, is 4%, but I must write this as a decimal. So that's 0 0.04. And T in this case is eight years. Notice that the interest rate is an annual rate and T is in years. It's important that I have matching units of time for these two things. And then I'll just fire it into the formula. So that's 2000 times one, plus 0 0.04 to the power of 8. You can write this value as 1.04 if you like as well. And then we'll go to our calculator and type it in in the calculator exactly as you see it on the page. In this case, I get 2737.138101, but I'm asking the question to give my answer to two decimal places. So my final value there is 2737.14, and it kind of makes sense to round it off to two decimal places here because I'm dealing with money. The question just asked me to find the final value here. But just note that if I was asked to find the total interest earned, I could calculate by subtracting the present value or principal from this final value. And in this case, that's 737.14. Just a word of caution with rounding off. Even if you're asked to give your answer to two decimal places, I'd really reserve the rounding off until the very end of the question and hold on to an extra couple of decimal places throughout your calculation. It's not really so much of a thing here because it's a short question, but in longer questions, just be careful to do that. So here's a fairly easy question to do yourself. Find the final value to two decimal places of 3,500 invested for six years at 2% AER. 
And in this question also, I want you to calculate the total interest earned. Pause the video here, complete the question, then check and see if you're correct. So I'm going to start out my formula down. F equals P bracket 1 plus I to the power of T. And then I'll note the values that I have in the question. This is my three values for P, I and T, and I'll fill those in. And in this case, my final value is 3,141.57. I want to calculate the interest earned as well. So I'll calculate F minus P, and it's 441 euro and 57 cent. Sometimes, instead of giving the AER, institutions give a monthly rate. So we need to be able to change back and forth between a monthly rate and a yearly rate. To do this, we'll be able to use a formula. It'll be 1 plus i to the power of 1 equals 1 plus r to the power of 12. We can actually simplify this formula a little bit and write it as 1 plus i equals 1 plus r to the power of 12. Effectively, what it's saying is that if I apply my yearly interest once, it should be the same as, as applying my monthly interest 12 times. Remember that i stands for the AER, the annual rate, and r stands for the monthly rate. So here's an example. What monthly rate of interest is equivalent to an AER of 5%? And we want to give the answer correct to two decimal places in this case. Well, I'll be using this formula. And I know the I, but not the R. I've filled it in and note that I've given I in decimal form because we must always change our interest rates into decimals in any calculations. And now I want to calculate R. So I'll get the 12th root of 1.05. I'll use my calculator for this. And you can see here that over the, uh, the power button, I've got, oops, turn on the calculator first, it probably helped, wouldn't it? I can press shift, the power button, and it'll allow me to type in the 12th root of 1.05. So my answer comes out, it's 1.00407412.4. I'm gonna keep all these digits for a moment, and this value is one plus R, so I'll just take the one away, and I'm getting an R value of 0 0.00407.4124. Now, I don't leave my answer as this, and I don't round it off just yet, because I want to give any interest rate answers as percentages. So I'll just times by 100 to get the percentage, and I'll have 0.4074124% equals to R. At this stage now, I'm at the end of the question, so I'll round off, and R equals to 0.41%. So here's your question. What is the monthly rate, which is equivalent to an AER of 8%, and give your answer correct to two decimal places? Pause the video here, complete the question, and then play and see if you're correct. So first of all, I'm making a note of my formula. Don't forget the I represents the AER, and the R in this case represents the monthly rate. Remembering to change my 8% to a decimal, I can say that 1 plus 0 0.08 equals to 1 plus R to the power of 12. The 12th root of 1.08 equals to 1 plus R. And if you want to write the next line in all in one calculation, we can say the 12th root of 1.08 minus 1 equals to R, and then we can stick all of that in one go into the calculator. So R is coming out as 0 0.0064303. Don't forget, I have to change this back into a percentage. I'll do so by times and by 100, giving me 0 0.64303%. And then, of course, I must remember to round off at the end. So my answer is 0.64%. Of course, we can also go from knowing monthly rate to knowing the AER, and that's a more straightforward process because we haven't got to root anything. Let's look at a quick example. What is the AER if the monthly rate is 0.5% and give your answer to two decimal places? Now you should be well able to do this, so pause the video here and give it a shot and then see if your workings match mine. So I'm just starting by making a note of the formula. This time I know R, not I. I mustn't forget to change that 0.5% into decimal when I'm filling it in. And if I want to just do it in one calculation, I can type into my calculator 1.005 to the power of 12 minus 1. This gives me an interest rate of 0 0.06167782. I'm getting ahead of myself there, putting in the percentage sign, not just yet. I'll times by 100, giving me 6.16778182%. And then finally rounding off, I've got 6.17%. Finally, for this video, we're going to look at calculating F when we're given R instead of I. So here's an example. So we've got to find the final value of €2,000 invested for two years and two months if the monthly rate is 0.4%. Now, I'm actually quite happy to work with the monthly rate. I don't need to go changing that. But I do need to make sure that the rate is matching the time in terms of units. And I mentioned this earlier in the video. So I'm going to start by noting the values that I have in the question. P is 2000 The monthly rate is 4%, writing it as a decimal of 0 0.004. And now time okay so my rate is a monthly rate so my time has to be months as well 
So I have to just convert two years and two months into months. So I've got a monthly rate and the number of months invested. And remember, that these units must match before I can proceed with the formula. So now I'll make a note of my formula for final value. The formula of the log tables is F equals P bracket 1 plus I to the power of T. This time I'm using a monthly rate, so I'll be putting an R in this place instead. And when I fill my formula in, it looks like this. So off I go to the calculator. And again, type it in exactly as you see it. I'm getting a load of decimal places there. I wasn't told to round off in the question, but it is money that I'm talking about. So it makes sense again to round it off to two decimal places at the end of the question. And my final answer there is 2,218.74. So here's a question now for you to do. Find the final value of 4,600 invested for three years and five months if the monthly rate is 0.6%. Pause the video while you do this and then play and check if you're correct. I'm starting by noting my values for P, R and T and note that I've changed my time from three years and five months into 41 months. Again, I must make sure that the units for my rate, which is a monthly rate, and my time, which is now in months, that they match before I begin with the formula. I'm making a note of the formula I'm going to use, which is my final value formula from page 30 in the log tables. And now I'll fill in. At this stage, I'll go to my calculator and type it in exactly as I see it. And I'll get an F value of 5878.615308, at which stage I'll then round off, even though the question didn't specifically state it, because I'm dealing with money. And at the end of the question, I'm going to round to two decimal places. So my final value here is 5,878 euro and 62 cents.